So let's embrace debate on today's Philadelphia Eagles now. Here's what we're talking about here. Should the Eagles draft running back B. John Robinson at number 10 or draft a bigger position of need that fits the Eagles' team-building philosophy, like let's say defensive line or offensive line, pass on Bijan at number 10, but then take another stud back, probably the second best running back in this class, at number 30 in Jameer Gibbs. Before we dive into all of this, want to hear from you down in the comment section and embrace debate like I said. Pick a running back between these two. Who would you rather have on this roster, especially considering and factoring in where the Eagles are picking at 10th and where they're picking at at number 30? BR for Bijan Robinson or JG for Jameer Gibbs? Now, let me just say, I'll set the foundation with this and preface all of this by saying I absolutely love both of these running backs. And honestly, I don't think there's a massive gap between Bijan Robinson and Jameer Gibbs. I think that Bijan can have a Christian McCaffrey type of impact on an offense, and he's a better runner than Christian McCaffrey. I'm more so saying that from a perspective of you can run him in between the tackles, out to the perimeter, put him out on a wheel route to catch the football, but also his footwork as a wide receiver out of the slot is really, really special. Whereas Jameer Gibbs can do a lot of the same things as Bijan Robinson, doesn't have the background and pedigree of Bijan just because he was playing on a loaded Alabama team, whereas Texas more so had to use Bijan a little bit more because that roster a little bit more top heavy and Gibbs is more so of an Alvin Kamara type. Can you really go wrong with the Kamara or a Christian McCaffrey? No. Can you go wrong with Bijan or Jameer Gibbs? I don't believe that to be the case. And we just popped up the numbers. Like the numbers between these two players are very similar. Bijan used a lot more last year, more than 100 more carries at 258, nearly 1,600 rushing yards, average yards per carry for both of these guys, 6.1. What's really interesting and fascinating for me, using Jameer Gibbs as a weapon and Bijan as a weapon, Steve Sarkeesian did not use Bijan Robinson enough as a pass catcher. He only had 19 receptions, whereas Jameer Gibbs, he had 44 last year for the Crimson Tide. Both transcendent talents, right? But Bijan, probably more so the transcendent talent who could be a Hall of Famer, but Jameer Gibbs could be a multi-time pro bowler. And with Bijan, some concerns here. Some injuries while in Austin at Texas and a bigger workload, a little bit more tread on the tires, right? Whereas Gibbs has that dual threat ability like the aforementioned Alvin Kamara. Athletically, how do they stack up against one another? You take a look at the RAS score here. This is the relative athletic score. Basically, these players are judged on a scale of 1 to 10. Bijan Robinson, a freak. If you watch him at the NFL Scouting Combine, he was moving so swiftly on the field at Lucas Oil in downtown Indianapolis. An RAS score of 977. Again, the max is 10. So that's impressive. Now, all of the green, that's elite. The yellow, it's about mid, but I don't care about the size. 5'11", 215, that's plenty good enough size for a running back, right? But when you get to the vertical, elite, broad jump, elite, 40-yard dash, 4'47", 20-yard split, and the 10-yard split, I think that's a really good measurement of short area quickness and explosion, he's elite there as well. So take a picture of that in your mind, and then we kind of transition to Jameer Gibbs here. Now, in terms of his height and his weight, I think the height is totally fine. He's 5'8", 199 pounds. Now, Bijan might be a prototypical, never-take-him-off-the-field type of player. You can use them on short yardage. You can use them on long-distance situations. Jameer Gibbs might not be used as a short yardage back because he is a little bit smaller, 5'9", 199 pounds, so a little bit of a difference in terms of the size there. Did do the broad jump, did do the vertical. The vertical, look, I don't know if it really means that much for a running back, but quick twitch, muscles, explosion, that's kind of the peek inside the window of what that means. But here's what is great. 
He did have an awesome 40-yard dash at 4-3-6. The 20-yard split was 2-5-2, and the 10-yard split at 1-5-1. An overall RAS score of 8.4. So not quite Bijan Robinson, but still really, really good. And I'm not going to be somebody who goes overly nerdy with combine results, RAS scores. I do think that when you compare the player to the player, though, it's, of course, important to kind of entertain the thought and compare how they compare and contrast athletically. Now, before we get to our next points here, please make sure you go down and hit that subscribe button. Do appreciate the support. Our draft coverage, I believe, has been straight up killer. Mock drafts, player breakdowns, debate shows like this, where we go deep dive into these prospects. Go Birds! Subscribe today. It's Philadelphia Eagles now. With Bijan, he does have Hall of Fame level talent, and that's really the consensus of all these NFL draft experts. Chris Mortensen, ESPN, saying basically he is a gold jacket type of player. In other words, if he doesn't get injured, he projects as a future Hall of Fame type of player. And Todd McShay said Bijan was higher graded and is higher rated than Saquon Barkley when Saquon was coming out of Penn State. If you turn on the tape and you look at what Saquon did with Penn State and Bijan did at Texas, they are two of the most gifted, two of the best football players, not just running backs, football players you will ever see at the college level. And so for some of these draft experts to pit Bijan Robinson as better than Saquon, who was a top three pick, right? And to say that he could be a potential future Hall of Famer, like that's really, really saying something for guys who study this stuff year in and year out. And I'm just getting my start here in this business, so I don't have the chops of a McShay or a Chris Mortensen. Basically, what this debate comes down to is this talking point and this right here. Would you rather draft a position of greater value at number 10? and pass on Bijan Robinson because you're probably not going to get him later on in the draft at number 30. And if you trade up to take him, I don't know if he's going to be available there at like 25, 20. Like he could go in the teens. He could go to a team like the Chicago Bears with their first pick. And if you do pass on Bijan, you still have an opportunity, I think on night one, to get a very good back who would be very good in this offense at number 30 in Jameer Gibbs. How do these two players compare with their usage? This is Bijan Robinson and his gap decision. So basically, this delineates and breaks down where his carries went last year and how he was utilized. So through the A gap to the right and left of the center, 64 carries, 332 yards. He went through the A gap, the second most outside of going out wide, either to the outside of the right tackle or the outside to the left tackle. When I say getting out to the perimeter, that's what I mean. Outside zone, that's what you often see. And that's how Bijan was utilized. 108 carries, 758 yards. But of course, B gap and C gap, 40 and 45 carries respectively. As for Jameer Gibbs, he didn't stack up physically and with this size like Bijan Robinson, but I actually like how often he was used all across the line and with his gap decisions. Again, about 100 plus carries less for Gibbs than Bijan Robinson, but through the A gap, second most like Bijan outside of getting out to the edge here. 44 carries, 407 yards in the B gap, C gap, 27 and 18. So he can run up the middle and then out wide again, a staple in this RPO outside zone type of offense that the Eagles run, 61 carries for 358 yards. For Bijan, it's hard to pass up on him considering the transcendent talent that he has and knowing that, look, even if you take a running back at number 10, he will be under team control for the next five years. And you're in your Super Bowl window alive and well over the next five years. So beyond that, who honestly cares if you run him into the ground and get top tier, high level production out of him? And what he did the last two years, like phenomenal. Each year, more than 1,100 yards. This past year, nearly 1,600. The average yards per carry, very good. Total touchdowns. 
My man had 35 total touchdowns over the last two years combined and can also catch the football, and I believe he can catch the football even better than how he was utilized at Texas the last two years in Steve Sarkeesian's offense. As for Jameer Gibbs, very, very good numbers. When he touched the rock, went for the same amount of yards per carry as B. John Robinson at 6.1. Now, the detractors might say, that, well, if he gets more carries, Chase, that number probably goes down. I'm not sure it does. I understand that he's playing with really good offensive weaponry. He had Bryce Young, good offensive line, but a buck 51 for more than 900 yards is very, very good production. And the eye test, both of these guys certainly pass it. So with that, was I able to convince you? Was I able to sway you, persuade you into one side or the other? If you didn't answer the question the first time, or if you've had a change of heart. Either way, let us know. Pick a running back. B. John Robinson, Jameer Gibbs. I'm in Key West by the time that you watch this. Thanks for watching today's show. Hit me up on Twitter and Instagram. Let me know what you think in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe.